Well, if there are no further policy matters requiring my approval, I'll leave you all to your own work. Yeah, thanks for your help, Mr. Reagan. Oh, we're so busy, alas, and shade their nests, and yet she's seemed busier than she was. They are too shaker and neat and mark a thing. They could no wheat pinch at her writing. Excellent, Bonnie, excellent. <laughs> Chaucer, what an inspiration to us all, huh? Yes, sir. Well, now, is the fiction material for the next edition shaping up? Oh, we have a few things ready. Good. We'll be hard pressed to week for that last issue. Real Polly. Thanks <laughs> for your story, my dear. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. Oh, Bonnie. Listen, I don't want to knock your stuff, but Mr. Dragon just doesn't know what's going to sell ads for this sheet. What do you mean? I mean that I agreed to try to keep the blue and gold and the black by getting people to advertise. But that doesn't mean getting the local fish market or drugstore. I'm after big stuff. I'm going to need your help in building up the fiction department. The fiction department is very strong. By Bonnie Sherman. The butterfly hovered over the nodding daffodil, then chanced to be sent. His soft, pastel-colored wings feeding the air ever so gently. Come on. There's a symbolism there you're obviously missing. Obviously, so is everyone else at Walt Whitman. I doubt it. Well, ask him. All you're really doing is writing for you and Mr. Dragon. And Chaucer, an inspiration to us all. Pete, I just know this is one seminar that will be most stimulating. I appreciate you thinking about it, Ken. Look, it says here, role-playing for effective learning. Two full days, $15, including lunch. Isn't that the weekend that I'm supposed to help you, Liz? Oh, we talked about it, but I wouldn't stand in the way of you continuing your education. I got a split. See ya. Bye. I'll think it over, Ken. We could go on to the university together. No sense in taking two cars. You, hey. Don't you get too pressed? Hi. Hi. I want to ask you all something, very honestly. Flat out? Yes. Am I writing stories that nobody likes? What story? For the blue and gold. The blue and gold, man, they can't even get the basketball score straight. You mean, do we like your stories? Not really. Nobody? Nobody I talk to. Why not? I guess because the things you write, well, they never seem to have anything to do with what's happening today, or to us. I haven't read one in a while, but are you still doing the birds and flowers and that stuff? I guess. I'm sorry, Bonnie, but you did ask. Uh, forget the flower jazz and get the basketball scores straight. Mr. Dragan, the fiction department of the Blue and Gold isn't getting through. Isn't getting through? The kids I've been talking to just don't relate to our material. Well, I feel we've always had first quality fiction, but perhaps we have overestimated our readers. Oh, I'm not suggesting we write down to them, but if we could experiment with stories that, that are more vital, I immediate. Yes, I like that. There should be an experimental aspect to our fiction. We should be able to bridge the gap and reach our audience. I'm so glad you feel that way, Mr. Dragan. I've written a story I'd like you to read. Oh, marvelous. It's very different from anything I've ever done before, but I found it exciting. Oh, I'm sure I will, too. I'll read it tonight. Thank you, Mr. Dragan. You'll always find me receptive to the exciting and the experimental, Bonnie. We must always continue to grow and to reach out. <laughs> Enough of that. I'll say no more in life your story. <laughs> um, now to words spake hey more than was need. Miss <laughs> Sherman, Bonnie Sherman, one moment, please. Oh, hi, Mr. Jagan. Have you read my story yet? I most certainly have. I've never had a more shocking or disillusioning experience in my life. You didn't like it? I found it conformed, unfortunately, to the standards of today, even to the explicit language. But, Mr. Jagan, we agreed we should try something different. This is the work of a confused and immature person. Certainly not a person to be entrusted with the fiction department of the Blue and Gold. Mr. Jagan, I don't think that... Miss Sherman, you are no longer on the staff in any capacity. Effective immediately. Good morning. What's with the reluctant Dragon? He fired me from the Blue and Gold. He fired you? Why? Did you misquote Chaucer? 
Did you put a comma where there should have been a semicolon? I wrote a story. Can I read it? I don't care. Hi. Hey. This is a beautiful story. You really like it? Mr. Dragon hated it. Well, then you know it has to be good. He actually fired you. Can he do that? In the bylaws of the blue and gold, there's something about a student being able to appeal any rule made by the faculty advisor. Appeal to whom? The principal. Appeal? The publicity will double our circulation. Bernie. There's the whole question of censorship. Does Dragon have the right to decide what we can read? No way. They can't do that to us. Do what, Jason? Whatever it is they're trying to do. Well, it's very touching. Yes, despite some of the situations, it really is moving. Yeah, if it weren't for that word. It's a tough position you're in. Taste change, times change. I still get in trouble with my grandmother if I say leg instead of limb in mixed company. Most of those kids hear that word every day. I don't see what effect it really has on them. I mean, what do we really protect them from? But does it belong in a school newspaper? I say it doesn't. Oh, I agree with that. So do I. Well, thank you, folks. This is a very disturbing matter. It helps to get other people's opinions. It's not easy to be a principal, is it? It's not easy to be a good principal. You wanted to see me, Mr. Kaufman? Yes, Ken. Come in. Have a seat. Thank you. Uh, I understand uh, Bonnie Sherman has appealed my decision not to publish her story. That's right. Ken, I've read that story. And after much soul searching, I've decided that I'm going to support you in the matter of that word. Well, thank you. That story does not belong in the blue and gold. I agree. However, I don't believe that it warrants Bonnie's dismissal from the newspaper staff. Oh, I, I see. Are there other circumstances that I'm unaware of? Uh, no, I can't honestly say there are. The fact of the matter is I probably did act in haste and without give consideration. It's not like you, Ken. No. It's not, is it? <laughs> Bunny, I've discussed your appeal with Mr. Dragan, and I'm happy to say that he's been more than fair in assessing his part of the situation. Yes, I acted hastily in dismissing you, Bonnie. The newspaper needs you. I hope you'll forget what I said and come back. I'd like to, Mr. Dragan. Well, <laughs> that's great. I wish all our problems could be solved that easily. What about my story? Are you going to publish it? I've reconsidered that. I reread your story, and though it's not my bag, as the saying goes, it does have literary merit according to today's tastes. So if you'll just remove that one objectionable word, the answer is yes, we will publish it. I'm sorry. I can't accept your offer to reinstate me as editor. Bonnie. Bonnie, it seems unfortunate that one word should create such a problem. I agree with you, Mr. Kaufman. I would hope that there'd be some way to work it out. I don't see how. Not under these conditions. Which particular conditions are you referring to? Censorship. I see. Bonnie, is this going to become a major issue on this campus? I don't like to think so, Mr. Kaufman, but I do. How did I know she was going to say that? Very kind of you to have lunch with me, Pete. Well, why? Well, you risk your popularity being seen in public with the censor. I'll take that chance. Mr. Kaufman, Mr. Kaufman. Yes, yes. You won't believe what's happening in the students' cafeteria unless you see it with your own eyes. Well, then I better see it. Not one student has been in for lunch today. Not one. All right. I see it. I believe it. Why? A boycott. A protest against some sort of censorship. What am I going to do with all this food? Can't you store it? I haven't got the space. I've got 500 sandwiches, thousands of French fries, and yards and yards of rice pudding. Well, Sevens. You're welcome to use all the drawers on the right-hand side of my desk. 
After that, you're on your own. Man, this is really something. Best boycott we ever had. I'm talking about my sandwich, man. The boycott's cool. It's a tribute to you, Bonnie, not to me, to what we're fighting for. If it wasn't for you, you know, we wouldn't be fighting. Can you imagine how militant he'd be if he really read the paper? If they had any doubts about where we all stand, this should give them the message. You know, we should set up a timetable to strike against selected classes. Starting with Mr. Dragon. Yeah, and if they don't agree to publish, then a general strike. It sounds good to me. You know, I hope they hold out that long, because the publicity would be great for circulation. Oh, and when sir Bonnie, we're fighting for a principal. Well, that's right. I keep forgetting. Considering what's going on at Whitman now, this might be a good time to discuss this man. Who was he? He published a newspaper in New York in colonial times. And he's called the father of freedom of the press in America. Why? Zinger kept writing editorials against the governor of New York, so the governor had him thrown in jail. What happened after that? The judge said he was wrong for printing the editorials, whether they were true or not. But the jury said he wasn't, and that established the principle of freedom of the press. Hey, man, that's just what we're fighting for here at Walt Whitman. Are you trying to tell us something, Mr. Dixon? No. I'm just relating past history to present events. Do you agree with what we're doing? Well, if I were you, I'd consider the issue carefully before you decide to go to the wall. We have thought about it. And we're ready to go. Then you go. I must tell you, Mr. Kaufman, when I read that story, I couldn't believe our daughter had written it. Well, in many ways, it's an exceptional story. But the language. I was really shocked. Well, then, perhaps you can appreciate my position. The reason I asked you to come in was to try to get your help in heading off an action that the students are contemplating. One that I think would only create dissension between students and faculty and ultimately be bad for everyone. You mean the possibility of a student strike? Yes. I thought if we got together, the three of us and Bonnie, that we could come up with some solution to avoid a strike. We wouldn't like to see it happen either, Mr. Kaufman. We also do feel, however, that there is a very serious constitutional issue involved here in an area both of us have always been very concerned about. Oh. Yes. Censorship. Right. Even though we completely understand your position, we feel that we'd have no choice but to give Bonnie our full support. In what way, exactly? Well, I think it would work to the school's advantage, actually, by taking the issue out of the school and into the courts. The courts? Yes. We're going to sue you on Bonnie's behalf for what we believe are her very important constitutional rights. You're going to sue me? You mean you're going out and get a lawyer and sue me? I am a lawyer, Mr. Kaufman. Oh. Oh, that makes it easier, doesn't it? I'll talk to Mr. Dragon about it. Hi. Oh. Did you talk to your lawyer? Yeah. Can you be sued? Well, there seemed to be plenty of precedents. There was a principal in New York who refused to allow an article to be published in the school newspaper because he considered it obscene. The student sued. Principal lost. What'd your lawyer suggest? He says stay out of court. Because if I win, I'm a big oppressor, and if I lose, I'm a loser. Also, the school board's not going to be too thrilled about the publicity, but right now I'm more concerned with my conscience than theirs. What are you going to do? I'm going to go home, see if I can get there before my lawyer's bill. Morning. Oh, oh I heard the bad news. I don't suppose I need to ask what news. I handled it badly myself right from the beginning. And if I hadn't, you wouldn't be in this situation right now. Well, you did what you thought was best at the time. Ultimately, any question of censorship has to be my responsibility. But thanks, anyhow. Morning, Miss Evans. I'm so glad to see you. I heard you were arrested. I don't think so. Oh, Mr. Kaufman! I heard about you being dragged into court. Well, it hasn't happened yet, Miss Johnson. Well, listen, I'll do anything I can to help. I've been to court. You yeah. have? What were the charges against you? Oh, <laughs> I wasn't on trial. I was testifying as a character witness for a friend of mine. 
I'd be glad to do the same for you. Well, I'll certainly keep that in mind. Hey, you know, with all that's been happening to you, it's as if you got that chain letter and threw it away instead of me. <laughs> Almost, yes. Well, listen, if you need me, I'll be there. Thank you. Oh, I could have avoided so much for two dollars in stamps. Why should you want my opinion? I'm not on the staff. Oh, I know, but I don't think we would have ever been offered this material before you began your fight to promote freedom of the press. So that's why I think that you're better qualified than most to judge. Now, if you wouldn't mind just taking a quick look at one or two, I've marked the appropriate passages. All right. Mr. Dragon, this is terrible. Do you think so? This one's even worse. Students wrote these? These are the better ones, in my opinion. Well, you can't compare these to my story. Well, that, that same word occurs uh, there, and uh, there, and, uh, and there. But these things have no literary value. In your opinion? Yes, in my opinion. Then, if it were left to you and you decided not to publish these submissions, wouldn't you be violating freedom of the press? That's not an easy question to answer, Mr. Dragon. Oh, I know. One man's freedom of expression may very well be another man's obscenity. But where does one draw the line, Bonnie? You know, when a man has the power to exercise authority arbitrarily, but does so wisely and with restraint, he's a very rare man. And we're quite fortunate to have such a man here at Walt Whitman. I'm referring, of course, to our Mr. Kaufman. But then, of course, that's just my opinion. A little while ago, Mr. Dragon showed me some stories that have been submitted to the Blue and Gold since we started our fight. Everybody's getting interested, getting involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, they were terrible. It would be wrong if the paper had to publish that kind of stuff because of me, because of our fight. That sounds like the beginnings of a cop-out. Right. Yeah. They're getting to you. Don't listen to them. This isn't them against us. This is Bonnie Sherman writing a story. Mr. Kaufman drawing a line because it's his job and defending his decision with dignity. I mean, you're calling it off, right? I'm asking my parents to call off the suit. Oh. If you all feel that I've let you down or sold out, I'm sorry. Well, there goes our circulation, our advertising, our publicity. Bernie. I know. It's the principle. Sue me. I don't know if you're doing the best thing, Bonnie, but I think you're doing the right thing. Thanks. When you believe in something, you do it, no matter what it costs. You can't knock that. Listen, something good may come out of this anyhow. Like what? Like maybe you'll start reading the blue and gold. When they start getting the basketball scores straight. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have. How much time for what? To get 25 letters in the mail before I get caught in another round of disasters. Does this have to do with that chain letter? I got another one. They're giving me a second chance. I thought you didn't believe in that kind of superstition. Well, I really don't. Well, then what are you doing all this for? Hey, you're right. I shouldn't. It's a waste of time. Isn't it? I think so. That settles it. Won't do it. Very good, Miss Johnson. Thanks. You know, without your support, I might not have been able to do that. See you later. <laughs>